Okay, so it is midweek and um, there is a lot to talk about, including how Arsenal and uh, AC Milan are out. AC Milan, Arsenal out of the Champions League. And of course, we'd have um, other teams to look at, Atletico Madrid and of course, um, uh, Bayern Munich, who are the defending champions of the UEFA Champions League. Can Bayern Munich go uh, smoothly on course to defend that title that they currently hold? Remember, that has never happened in the history of the UEFA Champions League. No team has been able to win it back to back. So let's see how all of that goes. Remember, later today, it will be Manchester City going up against Barcelona. And um, let's see how uh, Manchester City try uh, their very best to see if they can be able to unsettle uh, Barcelona. There is uh, these and other stories. Of course, uh, during the week, we heard about the resignation of uh, Ben Nunu Mensa, who is the uh, chef de mission of uh, the... Uh, uh, of Ghana's participation in the Commonwealth Games, he resigned. And of course, he's also resigned as treasurer of the uh, Ghana Olympic Committee. And of course, uh, these are very, very unfortunate uh, developments, especially as Ghana is looking forward to uh, organizing uh, its participation uh, slightly differently from what has happened in the past, uh, especially with regards to uh, the London 2012 Olympic Games and the Maputo um, the Maputo Games, the All-Africa Games that was held before the Olympic Games. So um, these are major, major blows that have hit uh, Ghana sports and uh, we'll be discussing all of that as we go ahead. Remember to bring in your comments is Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto for Facebook and 1760 if you're on your mobile phone. So you send in the messages ahead of time. Let's see how all of that goes. So uh, can Manchester City and settle Barcelona uh, later today? Well, that's a very, very big question which I believe uh, you have answers to. So I'd be glad if you send them uh, so we uh, talk about them right here on the show. So it's one hour and 30 minutes of everything from the world of sport. We'll be talking about that. Of course, uh, the Kumasi Asante Kotoko family is also mourning the passing of former Accra representative Jerry Asari. And of course, uh, the boxing professor would have to thank God for his life because uh, he escaped uh, a very uh, near fatal accident. And so um, we'll be getting an update on uh, what's, what's been happening with him, especially after he was uh, discharged from hospital. So thank you very much for joining us here on the show. It's Sports Today and it's only here on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. Uh, we'll do a round of commercials and we go straight to the newspapers as always. The Graphic Sports is rating uh, sportsmen and it talks about how Cristiano Ronaldo is uh, the world's richest with 122 million pounds. This is uh, his uh, net worth, 122 million pounds. And of course, that's a picture of uh, Jerry Asari on your right hand side. And of course, Azuma Zoom Zoom Nelson, the professor, the boxing professor in the cap. He escaped death and uh, Lionel Messi and uh, Eto follow. Now, uh, Samuel Eto feels uh, is worth 70 million pounds. Lionel Messi is worth 120 million pounds. Wow. Some very big figures there. And... Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's quickly go into the uh, center spread. And um, it captures some Ghanaian stars in action, as well as uh, some of the matches that were played at the weekend in the Ghana Premier League, the first Capital Plus Premier League. So there we are. Coach Tanko Shaibu there as well as uh, coach um, Mohamed Ahmed Polo, he could just gradually be getting things right after Accra Hatsavok recorded that 3-0 win. And there are some Ghanaian stars in action as well. Kwejua Samoa there, Christian Achu, and of course uh, Kevin Prince Boating as well. All right, so... Let's also uh, take a look at some of the other stories in there. And uh, Professor Francis Dodu, who is the uh, president of the Ghana Olympic Committee, he says that Ghana Athletics will bounce back. 
And I'm sure that all of this is uh, as a result of the performances posted by Ghanaian athletes in the U.S. National Junior College Championships. So there we are. So when you look at page 7, it talks about some iconic celebrations. Eto and Mela in 10 iconic celebrations. <laughs> David Mela, he uh, head-butted the, <laughs> the corner flag. And of course, some of Eto feels surely doing that dance, uh, posing as an old man, holding his waist, and using the corner flag as a walking stick, clearly to respond to uh, comments from his coach, uh, Jose Mourinho that he was uh, older than uh, the age that everyone knows him for. And of course, I just hope that all of that was done on the light side because, of course, if he has any other undertones, it could create a lot of trouble for uh, the two. I'm talking about Samuel Leto Fields and his coach, uh, Jose Mourinho. Let's also take a look at the 90 Minutes newspaper. This is the front page. And of course, um, Tevez Hills Red Hot Asamoa. Asa makes history. Remember that Kwejo Asamoa scored a very impressive goal at the weekend to get the victory for Juventus. And after Steven Apea, Kwejo Asamoa clearly is also making a major, major impact at the Italian Giants. Let's also take a look at what is on the back page. Olivier Giroud, remember that he's had um, some issues with infidelity. Well, He's opened up about his extramarital affair. And, of course, you'd want to take a look at that on the back page of the 90 Minutes newspaper. So uh, that's how it happens. Uh, the footballers also have their troubles sometimes. And um, it surely is tough to deal with. Okay, so there we are. Samuel Eto Fields there. And that uh, what, in what uh, the graphic sports refers to as iconic celebration, this obviously is in the center spread of the 90 Minutes newspaper. And there is a picture of uh, his girlfriend and um, their child. So uh, it goes to just talk more about the age issue of uh, Samuel Eto'o Fields. And this obviously was sparked by his coach, Jose Mourinho. We have the fixtures now. And uh, these are the games to expect later today. It's Barcelona versus Manchester City and Paris Saint-Germain versus uh, Bayer. Leverkusen. So um, who is your money on? Send me a text message on 1760. Or um, you can get on my Facebook wall and we can start talking now. So it is uh, Barcelona, Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain versus Bayer Leverkusen. Who goes through? Are we expecting any upsets later today? Well, well, well. Let's see how all of that goes. Let's also uh, take a look at the uh, games that will be expected in the UEFA Europa League tomorrow. Paso play uh, SV Salzburg and of course FC Porto play Napoli. Uh, Lugrets Razgrad play uh, Valencia while Angie Makashkala go oh, away to play um, AZ Alkma. And Juventus uh, Fiorentina, that's uh, an all Italian class. Uh, Vittoria Plezen play uh, Olympic Lyon, while Sevilla play Real Betis. Benfica go up against uh, Tottenham Hotspur. So the All right there, Edison Arantes de Nascimento. He is uh, called the World Pele, and uh, he is referred to as the greatest of all time. He's been adjudged by FIFA as the greatest of all time, and that uh, award was given to him at the draw for the FIFA World Cup in Brazil 2014, his home country. And, uh, well, old age, you realize, is catching up with him, uh, doesn't it? Well, let's come back here at home and take a look at the first Capital Plus Premier League, which returns to some midweek action later today. And, of course, it will be action in some of the centers. Let's take a look at the fixtures. All right, so Midyama SC and uh, Liberty Professional uh, so, uh, will uh, Midyama SC and Accra Hearts of Oak will go up against each other. So that game will be played at the Takwa TNA Park. Let's see if Accra Hearts of Oak can be able to maintain that uh, form. And of course, Liberty Professionals play Brekum Chelsea. And uh, remember, these uh, teams, uh, Brekum Chelsea and Midyama SC, uh, have been uh, in action on the continent. Uh, and now, 
It's Brecum Chelsea who are out of the uh, CAF Champions League. Mediama SC remain in the Confederation Cup, however. So it's Mediama SC versus Hearts of Oak, while Liberty Professionals play Brecum Chelsea. So um, that is what to expect in the First Capital Plus Premier League. These are uh, fixtures that, uh, you know, are outstanding. So we'll see how all of that goes. Remember that uh, you can get on my Facebook wall. So we start talking about all the stories we've brought to you and all. Uh, during the week, uh, boxing legend Azuma Zumzu Nelson, he, uh, you know, survived a very, very, uh, very, very bad accident, a uh, very bad motor accident. And he uh, was, uh, you know, admitted into hospital but has been discharged since. We'll be uh, taking a look at what the situation is with the boxing professor. Of course, the whole uh, football fraternity here in Ghana uh, are mourning the uh, passing of Jerry Asari, who is a former representative, a crowd representative of the club, and uh, he passed on after an illness. So uh, condolence is going out to the family, of course, and also to the board and management of Kumasi Asantikoto, who surely have lost a very, very uh, passionate, uh, you know, a very, very passionate, um, you know, uh, man. Okay, let's also now go over to uh, Eben Edu of Mediama SC. He'll be telling us about that game that they are going to play against the Kra Hearts of Oka. Thank you very much, Eben, for joining us on the show. Hello, Eben. Hello. All right, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Now, you're going up against the Kra Hearts of Oak, and uh, Hearts of Oak, they uh, revived themselves with a 3 0 win in the last match day. How well can you perform against Hearts of Oak, especially before your home fans? Well, thank you very much, and good morning to your listeners. Um, Hearts of Oak has been one of our boogie clubs ever since we came to the Premier League. Um, we always have that edge over them. Um, if you check our record between Hearts of Oak and Hearts, you can see that we've won a, a number of games against them, and we are always very confident against them. So we believe that um, today is going to be the same. Um, the table is not going to turn. Um, the Gamer Sporting Club is going to carry the day because um, we, we are in that confident mood. And if you look at a confident in camp and we see the togetherness in camp, we want to come back and make sure that we get our respectful position on the log. So we want All right, to Eben, um, can you speak up a little bit? We're having difficulties hearing you. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I was saying that um, Hartford has been one of the boogie clubs ever since we came to the Premier League. I mean, we always have that confidence, that edge over them that uh, any time we are playing them, we believe that we can score against them. And I think that today's game is not going to be this uh, different. Um, there's, um, the confidence in camp is very, very high. Um, the boys are in the mood to win today, and we want to better our standing or our position on the low. So today's game is going to be a win for us. All right, so um, for you, it's going to be a win. Now, um, what are the fans saying back home, uh, you know, in Takwa about this game and uh, the team's chances as well? Um, the fans uh, believe that um, playing as a folk, I mean, uh, as I said, is the same. Um, we, we have that confidence. We have that edge. And I think that if you check our records, um, we've been in the Premier League for the past four seasons. Um, um, we've scored more against us. We have more wins. And we, 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 we believe that um, if it is out of football, then Medium Sporting Club can do it. I mean, uh, no disrespect to them. Um, they are a good side. Um, they are passing through one of few turbulences, um, winning bits and patches here and there. But I think that. Uh, uh, we as a club, we, we, we believe in ourselves so much that um, when it is hard to folk, definitely Medium's sporting club is going to win. Okay, Eben Edu is uh, in charge of communications for Mediama SC. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let's see what happens later on in that game. So we'll also be getting on the phone line to talk to Accra Hearts folks, uh, Moib Said, who uh, is a PRO for the club. He'll also be telling us... Uh, how sure Accra Hearts of Oak is about, you know, maintaining that newfound momentum, especially after that 3-0 win uh, that was recorded in the last match day at the weekend and what the boys are saying in camp ahead of this very, very big game. You can send, some as, uh, you can send us a message. Uh, you know, there's, there's uh, news coming in that Accra Hearts of Oak's offices have been burgled. Uh, we'll be getting uh, some more, you know, details 
uh, about this and um, we'll be getting some more uh, you know information about this uh, that comes that, that that just came in that the offices of Accra has evoked in Adabraka in Accra uh, the Ghanaian capital have been um, that the office has been uh, burgled we want to know exactly what it is that has been taken out of that office and uh, what effect is going to have on the day-to-day -day running of the club as well let me do some messages uh, one has come from Prince Charles Adigbe says not only Chelsea can make it Manchester City uh, too will be uh, out so sorry for Arsenal Ikechuku Kenneth just says I wish uh, Manchester City luck okay let's now get back on the phone line and uh, Muhib Saeed is on to talk to us thank you very much uh, Muhib uh, some disturbing news reaching us indicates that uh, the offices of Accra has evoked have been burgled can you give us some more um, uh, information about this well, uh, Muhib I uh, appreciate it if you speak up a little bit so we can hear you more better yeah, it was during a match against uh, Amidao. Uh, I think the person has been monitoring and has seen that during our matches, we all go to the stadium, including the security. Uh, but for the fact that you've already heard it, the police actually advised that we kept it quiet so that we go about their investigation. It is one computer that was stolen, though. Okay, one computer, and uh, that computer out of the administrative office, what does it do to day-to-day -day running of the, uh, of the office? Oh, we have others around. We also have backup, so... Oh, you've got, you've got good backup? Yes. Okay, now let's get into the business of, um, you know, uh, later today, where you'll be going up against Midyama SC, uh, now, Midyama have a very big boost as they continue to play uh, on the continent in competition. Now, uh, I just spoke to the, the communications uh, manager, and he says that they have always had a very big edge when they play Accra Hearts of Oak, and they are going to make sure that you return to inconsistency later today. Of course, I would be surprised if they were not uh, very confident, because uh, they are coming from... Yeah, they are coming from a, a victory, a very important victory in the Confederations Cup. And so we we can understand that they will be in very high stories. We also had been finding it very difficult to be a class for stadium. We had a breakthrough. And uh, our boys generally are exhibiting... Uh, a very high morale. So we are also very confident of uh, a very good game today and, and, and victory. All right. So um, Accra Hearts of Oak and the revival and uh, going forward. Now, uh, Asante Kotoko has stretched. How much does it take out of your resolve to keep playing and keep getting the results? Oh, it has done nothing to dent our resolve. We believe that uh, it will be an improvement over last season at least if we are able to consolidate the second position and it will show that we are making progress from the project of the past uh, four years. So our focus now is to be able to consolidate the second position and the first one. All right, uh, Muhib Saeed, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, now, Muhib Saeed is the uh, spokesperson for Accra Hearts of Oak. Remember, Accra Hearts of Oak is going up against Midyama SC uh, later today. So, uh, we'll be monitoring that game and we'll be bringing updates on our other bulletins. Let's now take a look at what's happening in um, Ashanti Gold because Coach Bashir Hayford says that he is not afraid of the... Um, the sack. But before that, let's take a look at coach uh, Carlos Alberto Paulette, who is uh, confident that Mediama can buck the trend with Old Sakra has evoked in the outstanding fixture for the first Capital Plus Premier League uh, later today. So uh, coach Paulette says that he believes that uh, his side can just, uh, you know, do some magic against Sakra has evoked. And to another coach, Ashanti Gold uh, head trainer, Bashir Hayford, says that he is not afraid 
of getting sacked by his employers following his team's run of poor results. And uh, Coach Bashir Hayford said this on the last match day in the first Capital Plus Premier League. And um, he says that, look, um, I am not afraid of the sack. And uh, he thinks that uh, he is still working towards uh, improving the team at Ashanti Gold. Let's talk some more stories here on sports today. And, of course, uh, the Ghana Football Association is expected to take action uh, in the uh, case of uh, the late referee, uh, Kwame Andoche, who passed on on Friday. So there, is, there, is, uh, there, there are allegations that uh, referee uh, Andoche uh, was beaten up after which he had to be, uh, you know, he had to report to the hospital. And then after that, it resulted in his untimely death. Now, we've been joined uh, here on phone by Ibrahim Sanidara, who speaks for the Ghana FA. He'll be addressing this and a, a few other uh, issues there. Uh, thank you very much, um, Ibrahim Sanidara, for joining us. Now, uh, this news of referee um, Che's death uh, hit the football fraternity pretty, pretty hard. And now the FA wants to take action. What exactly is the FA going to do? It depends on the content of what we receive from the Western Region Football Association report. If we receive a report that states exactly what happened, uh, then we'll look at their recommendations and we'll also add to that. The reason why um, we don't want to rush into any conclusion at this moment uh, is that, you know, the people are trading accusations here and there. We just want to be sure that we get all the facts possible to be able to prosecute an action that would help stem the violence, particularly in the Western region that we've seen in the past few weeks. Now, um, does it just look like um, this issue will not go away? Because every other time we hear it, I mean, journalists get lynched, uh, match officials get lynched. And these issues are real. Sometimes the fans also threaten and all. Um, maybe the FA should just uh, take some very, very concrete security measures, especially um, at match centers in the uh, lower divisions. Um, have these proposals come forward? Well, we've had some of these proposals in the past. And you remember that um, sometimes it's come down very, very hard on clubs when some of these issues happen. You remember that a team like uh, Usia Glass was banned for 10, uh, 10 matches at home and it nearly resulted in their uh, demotion into the second division league. And, you know, some of these actions we've taken, not only with Glass, Kotoko, or Hearts have all suffered in, in similar ways. Now, what we realize is that, you see, we, the Ghana Football Association itself, within the confines of the law, is a bit powerless, apart from the fact that we can clamp down um, on the clubs in our internal system. We also need the police to also support us. In that, when they go to matches, when they are sent to matches, to police matches, and they get people perpetrating acts of violence, we want some people to be arrested and put before the law court. Football is not an island from Ghana. It must play within the confines of the laws of Ghana. So if somebody goes to, to a football match and takes the laws into his own hands, beats somebody up, the person should not get away with it. The person should be arrested like, you know, it will be done to any ordinary citizen on the street if that person perpetrates any crime and put before the law court. And All right. such a time that the people who perpetrate the violence are arrested and put before the law courts, people might want to say that, oh, it is the teams that will suffer, so I can get away with it with impunity. Uh, Sonny, there is also the issue about uh, how inadequate the security officials are, even at matches that uh, you know, the premier clubs are in, uh, involved in, in the, the, the top flight itself. Now, how do, then does the FA go around prov um, ensuring that uh, adequate security is provided at these games, uh, you know, where, uh, the, the, uh, you know, at these games in the lower division, especially considering that a lot of the time, you know, we don't even have inner perimeters.
Um, unfortunately, we lost uh, Ibrahim Sanidara there. We'll be making attempts to uh, get back to him on the phone line so he addresses these secu uh, security issues um, in the league. Let's uh, do some more stories here. And, of course, we'll talk about legend Abedi Pele, who is backing his son Jordan to uh, uh, continue the scoring form in France. So, um, remember that Abedi Pele also played his football in France where he played for uh, Olympic Marseille and won the Champions League with them. His son has been playing at Olympic Marseille but left for Socho on loan so he could get more playing time. But unfortunately, uh, uh, the goal scoring rate has not been uh, as good. He scored one goal last week and is expected that he would uh, remain in that vein or continue in that vein. Let's also talk about one player who scored a goal last week, but in a different league. I'm talking about the Italian Serie A, and it's the man, Quejo Asamoa, who has uh, penned uh, a, contra a contract extension, which will be for one extra year with his uh, team. Juventus, and of course, uh, Juventus are playing currently in the uh, UEFA Europa League. We'll talk about some more players in the Black Stars team, and of course, uh, ex-captain John Mensah has played his first competitive game in 10 months after completing the ITAR uh, regulation as uh, 90 minutes uh, for Slovakian side Nitra FC on Monday night. So John Mensah is one player who is uh, heavily expected to make the squad for the FIFA World Cup in Brazil in 2014. Uh, yeah, and that is uh, the former uh, national under-20 uh, striker Derek Mensah, who has resumed training at Czech Republican side uh, Banik Ostrava after making a return from injury. All right, and Edwin Jesse Garner's uh, Edwin Jesse, who is a striker, and uh, he, he has fixed uh, his, right, his sights on working uh, his way into a regular spot in the Heracles Armel, Armelo team. So let's see if he's able to make that, and that happen. And ex Hearts of Oak Chairman wants, uh, ex Hearts of Oak Chairman, uh, Harry Zakor wants Marcel Desai to be drafted into the backroom staff of Kwesiapia ahead of the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Remember that Marcel Desai was one of the people who were mentioned ahead of the naming of a head coach for Ghana following the exit of Milovan Rajvac. And Youth and Sports Minister Elvis Afri Ankara is confident uh, that the Black Stars will prepare adequately to make a successful appearance at the FIFA World Cup, also make major, major impact at the Mundial. All right, so uh, we've had some uh, things happen during the week. Uh, the man, Ben Nunu Mensah, he resigned as a chef de mission of Ghana's participation in the uh, Olympic Games. Okay, now Ben Nunu Mensah is also treasurer of the Ghana Olympic Committee and has resigned that position as well. And uh, he cited some personal reasons for doing this. And of course, uh, this man surely was very, very passionate about the whole uh, participation of Ghana in the Commonwealth Games, and uh, he was way looking forward to making an impact. But well, unfortunately, he is having to step aside on his own will. Well, uh, Ben Nunumensa's uh, resignation has been met with a lot of disappointments for the sporting fraternity. Uh, we uh, had a chat with uh, the chairman or the president of the uh, Ghana Swimming Association, who says that this surely is a very big blow. The youth and sports minister, Elvis Afriye Ankara, is also not very happy about this situation. So it is expected that Ben Nunumensa will round up his work uh, this week and uh, hand over fully uh, by the end of the week. I'm talking about Friday, which comes um, in two days' time. So Ben Nunumensa, no more the uh, chef de mission of Ghana's participation in the Olympic Games in uh, 
Glasgow. Ghana for the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, Scotland. Nunu Mensa, who doubles as the treasurer of the Ghana Olympic Committee, has also resigned the position as well citing personal reasons. In his resignation letter chance upon by Joy Sports, Nunu Mensa stated, I do this with a heavy heart, knowing the amount of work, energy and passion we have put into trying to get Ghana sports on the right track. But I have to take this very sad decision for some very personal reasons. I will be available to assist with any briefs or input that would ensure a smooth transfer of work and also keep Ghana on track with all the deadlines. Ben Nunumensa would hand over to the Ghana Olympic Committee and the Planning Committee of Glasgow 2014 notes on working teams' activities so far. All right, so there he is, uh, Ben Nunumensa. He has resigned as the... Uh, the chef de mission of Ghana's participation in uh, the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, which happens in some months' time. Let's also go on the phone line again and talk to Yao Seki, who's spokesperson for boxing professor Azuma Zum Zum Nelson. Now, uh, thank you very much, Yao Seki, for joining us. Uh, the uh, the uh, professor was involved in an accident. Uh, how is he doing? Thank you very much, Nat. The yeah, professor is doing very well, by the grace of God. Yes, uh, he he was involved in an accident last Saturday. Um, um, a, a reckless taxi driver who ran into his car. Uh, he sustained some some minor injuries, I should say. He was hospitalized at Kolebu that very night, but was discharged immediately on Sunday, and he's been doing very well since then. Okay, so he's up to uh, every, everyday work and everyday stuff. Yes. I see. Um, uh, what has he been saying about the, the experience that he had um, in that unfortunate accident? Uh, for him, he was a bit frightened. Uh, he was a bit frightened uh, uh, by, by the, the, the reckless driving, uh, by this, this taxi driver, because as he can recall, uh, he, the incident happened around Odoko traffic lights, where he has, he has stopped. You know, because after 10 p.m., you know, the traffic goes down back. So he had stopped making way for oncoming vehicles and then to make a turn into the other core area. And then from nowhere, the tax driver runs into into his car, you know, and uh, the passengers in the taxi also sustained some very severe injuries. And uh, the professor bled, you know, and uh, became a bit unconscious. Uh, that he was taken to Kolebu. Um, he was treated, hospitalized, and, and discharged. Uh, as he recalled the event, uh, he was quite shocked because for him, he, as, as, as an obedient you know, uh, motorist, he was in his lane, and he didn't understand why and from where the taxi driver would do such a thing. But, you know, it goes to confirm the, the, the recklessness and the danger that we are all involved on in the road. And so we would probably use this opportunity to encourage these drivers to be careful on the road, not, not to put other motorists in danger. All right, so uh, we thank you very much, uh, Yao Sechi. Now, uh, this taxi driver who uh, rammed into Azuma Nelson's uh, car, uh, where is he and what's his situation? Um, the, the last time I checked, uh, here he is reported himself to the Odoko police station. Uh, but I've not followed up uh, on on his on his case. I mean, now it's in the hands of the police, so I leave it to uh, to to the police to 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 take care of that. Yao Sechi will say thank you very much to you. Uh, Yao Sechi speaks for Azuma Zum Zum Nelson, the boxing professor, Africa's greatest boxer, uh, the International Boxing Hall of Famer, who was involved in an unfortunate accident at the weekend, and uh, he is said to be fine and going about everyday stuff uh, as usual. He was uh, admitted in hospital but discharged after he was treated so you're still here on sports today on the joy sports channel on multi tv there is more to come uh, after this round of commercials all right so we're still here on sports today let me get uh, a few messages uh, from you now there is one from mcdo uh, kwashi 
not uh, we will break the trophy less chinks this season. I'm sure he's talking about Arsenal. What is happening to Arsenal? Send me a message on my Facebook wall, uh, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Apologies for uh, those of who, uh, apologies to all those of you who are unable to get through uh, on your mobile phones. Uh, we're having issues with our um, text console, so we'll be sorting that out soon. But so for now, let's all rely on my Facebook wall. Let's get on my Facebook wall. Let's get talking. It's Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. There's another one from Frederick uh, Amwakuneza. He says, Nat, I doubt if Arsenal will um, want to really win a trophy. Even uh, with the FA Cup left for them, we, uh, they will still stand to disappoint their fans. I see Manchester City upsetting Barca tonight. No matter the situation, still Manchester United forever. And this one came from Frederick Amwakun Neza. Patrick Entry Boisiaku says, uh, Hello, Nat. Manchester City should keep uh, asleep because they can't qualify over Barcelona. And uh, another one says Barcelona will beat Manchester City by three goals to one up uh, Barca, Barcelona all the way. Dagui Doji Sefa says, I think Hearts of Oak will win today's game, but for City, they are out. Samuel Lai says, it's all about Barca, guys. You heard? All right. Another one from um, Andrew Richard Hine says, Arsenal has FA Cup already this season. Now BPL next season and the rest will follow. I wish Zlatan Ibrahimovic all the best in that game later tonight. That came from Andrew Richard Hine. Now, Otto von Bismarck says, Barca and PSG will make it later tonight. Brain Adam Collins says, Bayern can't retain the, cha the Champions League and Arsenal will surely win the FA Cup. The Gunners forever. Also, uh, Paris Saint-Germain and Manchester City will go through today. So, who do you think will go through... Um, we're talking about the games later today. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen, they'll be playing away to Paris Saint-Germain. And of course, Barcelona will be playing Manchester City. Who wins uh, either of these two ties and who goes through? Remember, it's an aggregate issue. And of course, on aggregate is Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain who are in very, very uh, smooth control of the situation. Barcelona coming in with a uh, two-goal advantage. And of course... Um, Paris Saint-Germain, they were able to fall, uh, score four times in the last game. So that gives them a very, very big advantage. So you tell me what you also make of all of this uh, on my Facebook wall. It's Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Let's get talking. Uh, it's big games later today. And we need to see who will win what. Alexander Tete says, I pray Chelsea should uh, break and meet Barcelona uh, and then they will see who is who. Okay. Now, Nat says... Uh, that is... Okay, another one uh, from Mark uh, Do Kwashi. I think I've read this one already. There's uh, Kweku in Foom, Liverpool. And he says, Nat, I think Arsenal can break the jigs if Wenger changes his tactics or he's going to get sacked. My darling club Liverpool is winning the league. Now, password uh, Kudi Kwame says, Manchester United will be the only England club to progress to the next stage. And uh, Barca will win... And uh, PSU will also win. Glory, glory, Man United. Password Kudi from uh, Tabora. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Password, for sending us that message. We'll do some more stories here. And uh, the uh, Brazilian ambassador to Ghana, she's been talking uh, a whole lot about Brazil 2014. And you know, uh, the visas that will be uh, gotten by these fans who will be traveling to Brazil are absolutely free. All you need to do is to get your ticket. And this was confirmed by the Brazilian ambassador to Ghana, Her Excellency Irene Vida Gala. She was my guest on the Joy Sports link on Joy 99.7 FM last Saturday. All right, so uh, very shortly we'll be bringing you uh, the... Uh, uh, Brazilian ambassador to Ghana, who's been talking about preparations to Brazil. Remember, uh, the tickets are free. You will hear her in a bit confirm that. And uh, all you need to do before getting your, your free visas, I beg your pardon, not the tickets, your free visas, is that you need to get a match ticket. So uh, match tickets uh, are the prerequisite to getting your free visas to travel to Brazil to watch the FIFA World Cup. All right, let's take a listen to the Brazilian ambassador to Ghana. Getting the visa is very, very easy and simple. You just need the ticket. Okay. And, uh, you know, I went to the, the 
newspapers and then that very famous headlines, no ticket, no visa. That's it. But you can go the other way around. If you have a ticket, you have your visa. So very easy. You don't need any special uh, bank statements, nothing like that. You go online, you fill the form. But what we are doing Which is Which website do you go to? The, the website of the Brazilian Embassy, www dot Brazemb well I have to spell that it's quite complicated okay, but no B uh, B R A S E M B A C R A dot com dot B R okay. uh, I think that uh, what is really the challenge is to get the ticket and I noticed that Ghanaians were a little bit lazy, uh, late in terms of going online to buy and everybody believes that uh, GFA can get uh, the tickets for for the supporters. Uh, this is going to be the challenge, how you get the tickets. Uh, those who are going with the old, uh, with the several agencies, tour agencies, the Brazilian Embassy, we are talking to the tour operators. So we expect the tour operators who are handling the packages to bring the visas to us because we don't want peop uh, people going to the embassy one every one oh, single okay. person. So, so, okay, so you, you mean that you, you want um, the, the tour operators to bring the bulk passports to, to the, yes. the embassy? Yes, yes. Okay. So because the ticket, the, 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 the visa is free. You don't pay anything for it's the free. visa. Yes. I see. When you have the ticket, you don't pay anything. So what I'm trying to, to agree with the tour operator is that when they sell the package to the person, uh, I mean the package that means uh, uh, lodging, uh, airplanes and all this, mm. they also offer the service of handling the visa. Okay. And then they bring to us what will make things much, much easier because we know that the person has the plane, has the lodging and has the ticket and they only bring the ticket. So. We hope to have a very smooth process because we are working hard in terms of talking to everybody, to the corporates that are taking their VIPs and, uh, you know, we have all these people who are making offers. You were talking about the bank who is giving tickets. We are trying to talk to everybody to see how much we can advance and do it beforewards. Uh, and, well, now the best thing is not to have every single Ghanaian go into the embassy and then wait for the organizers that are sending them to go to the embassy. That's the best way. But attention, the visa is free and you can get the visa when you have your ticket. And the ticket is a nominal. Okay. Well, so that's it. You heard the uh, Brazilian ambassador to Ghana, Her Excellency um, Irene Vida Gala, and she's been talking about uh, the tickets. And uh, you, I'm told that the Ghana FA is going to get the next batch of tickets um, in April, and I'm talking about next month. So anybody looking forward to uh, getting there will do that. There are also some licensed um, bodies that are also selling much hospitality packages. Um, let's do some uh, text messages. Uh, a few more coming in. I'll be sharing them with you. Remember that we're just asking you a very simple question today. Uh, who do you think is going to make it through um, between uh, Paris Saint-Germain and uh, Bayer Leverkusen, as well as Barcelona versus Manchester City? Who makes it through? I've heard some of the predictions come through. A lot of them favoring Barcelona and uh, Paris Saint-Germain. But uh, who is in favor of a possible upset by these teams? And that's what I'm talking about here. So who could just, uh, you know, create uh, some upsetting situations here? Well, let's see how it goes uh, with um, the games that will be played later today. All right, now talk about Brazil. There are many promotions going on in town. And, of course, uh, telecom operators Glow have decided to sponsor 25 fans to the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. And uh, there are explanations as to how uh, it will be done. On behalf of the management and board of GLOW Mobile Ghana, I welcome you all to this important occasion as Globacom, Africa's premium indigenous telecom service provider, proudly announces another unique package of excitement for our loyal subscriber as we have done intermittently since we launched in April 2012. 
In our usual fashion, Glow Mobile Ghana is happy to offer our value prepaid customers who have kept faith with our network once in, once in a lifetime opportunity to watch Ghana play in Brazil in June this year. Yes, we are sending our customers to Brazil this 2014 to watch all the action with all expenses paid just because we are on the Glow Network and especially because we have displayed great faith and loyalty to the Glow brand. But because we cannot send all our customers to Brazil on this occasion, we are obliged to select the lucky ones by certain unbiased criteria. Being a sport lobby brand, Glow Mobile Ghana has decided to sponsor 25 Ghanaians, comprising 22 of our loyal prepaid subscribers and three of our industrial um, trade dealers to Brazil for a stay between June and July. To facilitate a fair selection of the lucky customer, we have come up with an exciting promo called Let Us Go to Brazil. And this is how it will work. From now till 31st of May 2014, prepare customer of GLO who cumulatively recharge their line with a minimum of 15 Ghana CD top time, stand a good chance of being selected for an all expense paid round trip to Brazil to watch and share Ghana to victory. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, one feature about this promo, which makes it stand out among others, is that in the event a customer wins a place to go to Brazil, but is unable to make the trip for some technical reasons, the customer will still be considered as a winner by Globe, and a flat take-home sum of 5,000 Ghana CD cash will be given to the winner. In addition to that, ladies and gentlemen, we are provided for exciting consolatory prices for more than 1,000 subscribers who may not be lucky enough to go to Brazil, but nonetheless deserve to enjoy some of the fun of the Let's Go to Brazil promo. 1,000 gross customers will also win airtime, World State Ghana CD, which should be credited to their main account. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this Let's Go Brazil promo is another evidence of gross work for football and our commitment to ensuring that the game in Ghana is not staff of the requisite doses of fun and excitement, especially during this football season. So you may conclude that Go Let's Go to Brazil promo is the perfect recipe for the creative infusion of fun and excitement into the sport. That is why I wish to encourage all those who are not yet on Glow Network to hurry and join the network since such opportunities are indeed rare. In conclusion, I would like to assure the sporting community of our commitment to the continued promotion and development of the beautiful game in the continent of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Globalcom family, I have the privilege of declaring that from this moment onwards, all your recharges and top up are being counted. Who knows, by May 31st, it could be any of you dancing samba on the beaches of Impanina. This is a beach in Brazil. I've not been there to myself. <laughs> The countdown for the journey to Brazil has begun for every good subscriber. Many thanks for your time and good luck to all our customers. Thank you. Also, you heard the explanation from Akim Kazim, who is in charge of uh, business at Glow. And of course, there are many promotions going on in town, and these could just be, uh, you know, other alternatives to wanting to solve the problem of uh, that big bill that you have to pay to go to Brazil to watch Ghana play, uh, you know, there at the World Cup. Okay, so talk about uh, Ghana. Well, uh, there have uh, some players who have played uh, for Ghana previously who are now retired, and uh, they uh, played a game against the retired national stars of Nigeria, and uh, this was at the Liberty Park. This is something that happens regularly. It happened uh, last Friday, and we've got some images for you. <laughs> so we've got the likes of uh, Felix Abouaji, uh, ex Ghana striker. I bet take the ball too easy. Ghana in the white and blue jersey. 
So it's the Ghana ODs versus Nigeria's ODs. Liberty ODs, actually. That was a very, very well struck one, but unfortunately, that could not happen. I just saw David Boating, uh, aka Reggae, formerly of Liberty. Hey! There. Okay, so uh, I also saw the MP for the WWE constituency, Felix Abuaji. Beautiful, beautiful play. Wow, wow, wow. The man still has a lot of football in him, assistant coach of Liberty Professionals. And it's just amazing how after so many years these people still have uh, a lot of football in them and um, whoa 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 beautiful beautiful recovery by the Ghanaian team, you, you look at the Nigerian team, you realize that they had a lot of quality compared to our players. What do you think did a trick for Ghana today? Uh, we depend more on teamwork. We, you, you saw the way we were passing the ball around. Um, uh, they, they are fitter than us. They are stronger, much stronger. In terms of stamina, we had the stamina. You could see that getting to the end of the match, they were a bit tired. But then they, 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 they complement their uh, skill with strength. And, 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 and I said that was the only problem lacking. And I think today, uh, some of our players did not have quite a good match. Uh, Felix Abwaji on a good day will have scored a lot of the opportunities he had. Uh, Does this say a lot about the fitness of our team? It doesn't look like you train very often, do you? No, we do. But what I think, what, what really has affected the fact that we played a league match just last week. You know, we are playing all this league. So we are playing every other Sunday. So we played a very difficult match last week on a very difficult turf. So a lot of our players got cramps and things. Um, they, they have revamped their team, brought in a lot more younger players, like Vitor Gali, like uh, Said uh, Anyara, like, uh, 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 let, me, let me say, Wahidi, Wahidi who played in the uh, 1992 uh, uh, Nigerian Super Eagles team. So um, even though we had Felis Abouaji, I think he was alone against some of this. You know, and you could see the way they were playing. Uh, they were not ready to let us move around with the ball. It's, it's, it's quite a good match. And I think, I think it's been a good match. Are you happy with the performance? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, I would have wished we won. But then I think 3-3 is a fair result of the game. They scored quite some good goals. We also scored quite some good goals. But we didn't utilize our chances. That's all. It's obvious that when you go to Nigeria, you have to, be, you have to step up your game if you want to get a result there. We've, we've won more of the matches in Nigeria. We've played this, this almost about 19, for 19 continuous years. And we've won almost about 12 of the matches uh, between Accra and Nigeria. We've won more. We won about seven in Nigeria, about five here in Ghana. And they have won about two here and won about six in Nigeria. So uh, on the whole, I think we have an upper hand. Honorable Neil Ante Van der Poy, uh, member of parliament for the Odududio constituency and also the deputy minister of trade and industry. Also an OD, uh, Liberty ODs member and uh, it was the Ghana ODs versus the Nigeria ODs there. Let's also take a look at the uh, story. We're still remaining in Nigeria and uh, business magnate Aliko Dangote is uh, set to be getting himself ready to... Um, fulfill his promise of uh, giving one million U.S. dollars to uh, the Super Eagles team that won the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa. And remember that uh, the uh, chief executive of Glow Mobile also uh, made a very, very good uh, cash donation to the team and uh, the coach after they won the uh, tournament. And of course, uh, Aliko Dangote is also going to uh, redeem his pledge of $1 million to the team. Let's talk a bit about uh, Cameroon captain uh, Samuel Eto Fields, who uh, has no intention of hanging his boots anytime soon, and he's, in, uh, he's uh, hinted that he could be extending his stay at Chelsea beyond this season. So uh, Samuel Eto Fields was brought in to uh, possibly solve the uh, scoring problems in Chelsea. Well, he's been able to do a little bit of it well, still a lot of it to do. All right, so the Australian Open coming up soon. 
Let's also take a look at what's happening in the world of boxing. When was the last time you heard of the man Miguel Cotto? Well, Miguel Cotto and is Argentina in the is news. Uh, let's take a look at what's happening with him. Sergio Martinez. Martinez continued their whirlwind promotional tour on Tuesday with a stop in New York City. The fighters were in Puerto Rico on Monday and will finish the press tour in Beverly Hills, California on Wednesday. Cotto will attempt to become Puerto Rico's first four division world champion, while Martinez, who has never lost a world championship fight, will defend the world middleweight championship title he first won in 2010. I'm just looking forward to start my camp, looking forward to train as hard as I can each day and being here on June 7 just to become the first Puerto Rican to be a champion in the four different division. Uh, I, I want to uh, say sir your luck in your camp, try to do your best, I'm going to do my best. One of Ghana's most promising boxers, Patrick Alute, will fight for the vacant WBC International Welterweight title in Zambia on Saturday. Undefeated Alote squares up with Africa Boxing Union welterweight champion Charles Manucci of Zimbabwe with referee Fred Gatti of Ghana in charge under the supervision of WBC Vice President and ABU President Hoisin Hauchi. Alote, who recently staged an exciting three-round exhibition bout with Rafael Mensa at the Art Center, is under the tutelage of the experienced coach Asari and is expected to return victorious from Lusaka. The former WBC International Silver Welterweight titleist is hopeful of claiming the international belt itself to set himself up for a top 10 ranking and consequent crack at the world title. All right, so uh, let's uh, now go to the moment of the day to round up all of this. Before that, let me say thank you to all of you for staying here with us. Remember that uh, GFA TV will be on later today. Time will be um, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So you have to... Uh, 9 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., I beg your pardon. So you have to uh, make a date with us here uh, on Joy Sports on Multi TV. So... Um, thanks to the whole production team. I will be back on Friday. And uh, let me say thank you to everybody who wished me happy birthday, uh, whether it was by phone calls or social media and, uh, you know, text messages and all. It was just an amazing time. Thank you all so much. So I'll be back. You all stay well. Keep it here on Joy Sports. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport. Check those knocked down. Richards down to Nasri. He's found a way through. City back in the tie. Well, he scored a beauty last week at Wembley with the outside of his right foot, but this is just hit with his left, and he's just gone for power. Takes up a good position on the edge of the box when Richards finds him. And I